All right, Mathematics for Liberal Arts, Class 112, Section 1-1. The nature of mathematical reasoning. Identify two types of reasoning is what we're going to talk about today. So reasoning, how your process of logical thinking goes. That makes sense. And there are actually two types of reasoning, inductive and deductive. We've probably heard the word deductive before. Um, deductive is based on previously accepted statements, rules, or fact. Previously accepted statements, rules, or fact, because they're gonna get a little tricky. So we wanna keep those definitions fresh in our mind. Um, Inductive is based on observations, examples. We saw some stuff. It happened that way. So maybe it's going to happen again that way, but it's kind of a maybe. Um, I would, you know, if there's a possibility that something else may occur, then it's inductive. But if there's, if there's no chance that something else will concur, uh, occur, then it's deductive because these are facts. So let's look at a couple examples of this. Um, inductive reasoning helps us make good guesses, right? We're still guessing because it's a maybe for inductive. Um, and these good guesses are called conjectures. We're going to guess what's going to happen. Um, but deductive reasoning is needed for proof. Okay. So the minute you have an example, which proves that that's not going to happen the way you're um, guessing. Uh, Counterexamples contradict conjectures and make them false. Okay, because that maybe is always lurking around the corner. So, for example, your instructor gives a surprise quiz every Friday. Let me move this up. I still want to keep those definitions at the top. Um, your instructor gives a surprise quiz every Friday for four weeks in a row. You could make a conjecture or a good guess using inductive reasoning because of your observations, right? That every Friday for four weeks that your instructor will give a quiz this Friday and every Friday after that. And it's a good idea to maybe be prepared for that. Um, one Friday without a quiz, though, would be a counterexample and proving your conjecture false of there being a quiz every Friday. Okay. Um, but if the syllabus states there will be a quiz every Friday, there will be a quiz every Friday. That is a previously accepted statement, rules, or fact. Um, so you can be sure about that by deductive reasoning. Okay. Uh, let's look at this next one. You have uh, driven while texting 10 times in the past without any incidents. Um, if you search for an article, uh, we don't have time to do that right now, but um, any, any article on studies texting while driving, um, what would you assume they would say? I think everybody would assume what they say is uh, driving while texting will increase your incidence of having an accident, your probability of having an accident. Um, that's a fact. They have proven that. Okay. So based on inductive reasoning, since you've been texting 10 times in the past without an incident, you would be more likely to text while driving in the future because you haven't had an accident. Therefore, you're thinking you won't have an accident when you do it again. Um, but if you use deductive reasoning because of the research you just looked up that says more texting means more accidents, then you would be less likely to text while driving once you've seen this evidence. Okay, it's just a way of thinking, a way of reasoning. Okay. Um, in the textbook, there are quite a few examples. Um, I wanted to mention the ones that don't have the answers on the page. When you're in class, I'm going to show you how to get to your e-textbook e um, in Alex. And you can look these up. And um, it looks like the odd numbers of problems have their answers 
So I wanted to go over a couple of the even numbers that don't have the answers sitting there. Um, number 44 talks about the fact that this person has to go to work um, and um, they think they're going to have to work a double shift today because they have a migraine. And every time they have a migraine, gosh darn it, they're going to ask them to work a double shift. So they're pretty sure today they're going to need to work a double shift because they have a migraine. So that is not a fact. That's a good guess. So that would be inductive reasoning. Okay. Um, number 46 and number 48 um, um, were where I think a little tightness uh, in the definitions. Um, it almost seems a little subjective or deep, but uh, I wanted to mention the two just in case they show up on the homework. Um, number 46 says, uh, Christmas Day, movie theaters and Chinese restaurants are always open. Therefore, this year, that time of year, we will be able to eat Christmas Day at a Chinese restaurant and go to the movies. Um, the book says that this is deductive. So I'm assuming they're talking about that's a rule, that's a fact um, that movie theaters are. I mean, it's probably pre-published right? That they're going to be open. Um, Chinese restaurant may have a sign that says we'll be open Christmas day. Um, so it's something you can count on as a fact. Um, 48 though says that every time the student has sold their book textbooks back to the bookstore, they only get about 10% every time they have sold their textbooks back. They have gotten only about 10%. So this year, they had decided not to sell them back. Um, the textbook says that the answer is inductive. I mean, there's still a chance that you would get more than 10%. It depends on the book. It depends on the place. It depends on the bookstores, vendors. Um, it's not a fact, especially the about 10% part was a little fuzzy too. So it's a little tricky. Slow down when you're doing these. Okay. All right. That was it for one one.